four. Seven, eight, nine, and our four and ten. All right, good job, everybody. Hope you're feeling nice and warm out there. The next thing that I want to try with the chair, this is a new one that I haven't really done um, with folks before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but it's basically a, a chair touch. So the closer you are, the easier it's going to be. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you're going to step back. But you're going to have one leg and raise the opposite leg. So if you're touching with your left hand, raise your right foot. And again, the further away you go, I'm going to move my coffee table here, the harder it is. So you can kind of play with this and see you know, what feels good to you. And once you've got a place that you are happy with, you can practice doing 10 on each side. I think I'll start right about here. The goal of these, again, is kind of slow and controlled movements, helping practice our balance, I'm always looking for things that you could easily do, you know, even in an office or a tighter space. This would be one that you could have around if you just need to get up and get moving. All right, let's finish two more of those. I'm keeping an eye on my time. So since we did two rounds of squats, we'll go ahead and go back through the um, other exercises. We'll skip over the squats for this one and get back down in our bridge. So we're gonna go right back through things kind of in the opposite, opposite direction. So back on our backs with our bridge. So now you know the movements. We're gonna focus on doing 10 of these and we're gonna go up lower down, up, down for three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. All right, great. Now we're going to come back again, opposite back to this sequence. So we're going to start now in our down dog. So from tabletop, push your ankles back, feet back, push into your shoulders, take a stretch there. When you're ready, you can kind of glide forward into a plank position and come down to tabletop. We'll do our cat cow exercises. So, taking a breath in, rolling up the back and out. Eyes come up to the ceiling or sky, hopefully. And just work through about five or six of these as it works for you. All right. When you're ready with those, from that tabletop position, we're going to do 10 more of the bird dogs. So we've got our knees and arms squarely under us. 
And when you're ready, starting with your right side, extend your right arm, left leg goes back, and then opposite. And we want this to be controlled, but still pretty active. more. All right. With that, come on up to standing. And I think that takes us right to the 15 minute mark. So thanks for working out with me. Well, hello everybody from Wyoming. It is beautiful here, but not as nice apparently as in Virginia. So we're still a little jealous, but I'm thrilled. I'm on grandma duty for the rest of the week. So I get to be home and so I'm thrilled it's gonna be nice and we can be outside a lot. So today we're gonna do a really quick and simple um, snack. It's just called the healthy chocolate banana smoothie. And so our first ingredient is chocolate milk and we're just using good old chocolate cow's milk. And the one drawback with using chocolate milk, it does have some added sugar um, in addition to the normal sugar milk already has in it. But we're gonna get lots of other good nutrients in this smoothie. So that kind of counterbalances that extra sugar. You could use almond milk, or if you have another favorite milk that you like better than cow's milk, then that's good too. So we're gonna start with one cup of the milk. Uh, we had our 4-H kids make this a couple of weeks ago, and some of the kids loved it, and then one kid tasted it and goes, oh, yuck. And so then they were all, oh, yuck. But I even liked it, and this has spinach in it, and I'm not a real green smoothie drinker, so I, I did like it. The next ingredient is one tablespoon of powdered cocoa. Again, just measure that off with a knife and get it nice and level. And then two frozen bananas. And we froze ours in the peel. And then we found out with the 4-H kids, you can't peel them when they are that frozen. So we thawed them just slightly in the microwave. And they're still really good and cold. But I may have done them just a smidgen too much today. But they're still, they're still frozen in the middle and just put those in in two chunks. Um, make sure you've washed your bananas before you put them in the freeze and um, with the peel on and wash them and then freeze them. Or you can take the peel off ahead of time and freeze them already in the, in the chunks. Um, they may get a little browner doing it that way unless you dip them in some lemon juice or pineapple juice or something like that. Our last ingredient is a handful of baby spinach, which is about a quarter of a cup. However, my hands are a lot bigger than a quarter of a cup. So we just had them smash those leaves down into the cup. And get a good, Good amount of spinach. This will give you lots of good vitamins, minerals. I love raw spinach, um, but cooking it has never been my favorite. Or in smoothies, but I, I can drink it in this one. You have to rotate that. Yours is already on. No, your spout has to. Okay. It's on. Okay. Okay. 
And then we're gonna turn it on really high. And this blender and I fight every time I use it. So, and so this would be a great after school snack. Um, basically, a, a, even a good breakfast snack, I think, or meal um, any time of the day. So, I think the trick to this smoothie, as with most smoothies, the colder they are, the better. And this one doesn't have any ice. The ice part of it comes from your frozen bananas. So you want- But I think you could add ice to it um, and, and it, make it that colder. Yeah. And I think you could probably just use bananas that were room temperature and then add ice if you didn't have time to freeze your bananas. But I also think this would be a great way to use up if you had a little dab of spinach left over and, um, or you made a big spinach salad and you saved some out to do the smoothie. So that's our snack for today. Really quick, simple and easy. So I thought I would also share with you that um, March, is National Living Well Month, and that is being promoted by the National Extension um, Association of Family and Consumer Sciences. And the theme this year is Raising Kids, Eating Right, Spending Smart, and Living Well. And so kind of the purpose is, um, of this is to help people um, do those things by providing the means for them to do them. And so Extension has a lot of avenues that can help people um, to live well. So they did give some tips and tricks to make not only March a uh, living well month, but every month of the year. And so those tips are engage in physical activity on most, if not every day, uh, 60 minutes for kids and 30 minutes for adults. So luckily we have 15 minutes of that 30 minutes in today with the yoga. And so being a beautiful day, I hope we all get to go outside after work and enjoy some more physical activity. Another one of the tips is drink plenty of water every day and stay hydrated. Um, water is a really important nutrient for all of us and it, makes our bodies work better and um, does a lot of good things for us. The next is to eat a variety of healthful foods, including lots of colorful fruits and vegetables. And always remember to eat by the my plate model. And I didn't bring my plate over here today and I should have, but I think all of, most of us know that Half your plate should be fruits and vegetables and um, the remainder of that half, the other half is a little less than a quarter protein with more grains and then um, some dairy. Other things is to keep your mind sharp by reading, um, participating in classes maybe that your extension office is offering such as FitX or other classes and work on a hobby. Have a hobby or work on a craft, maybe something that you plan to enter in county fair come summertime. And that seems like a long ways off, but we're already in the third month of 2021. So fair will be here before we know it. Another part of living well is maintaining a good healthy home. And I need a drink. <laughs> so with that Denise is <laughs> swallowed an ice cube so in the maintaining a healthy home um we want to make sure our smoke
detectors are working correctly and that they, so we either have special radon um, detectors or our smoke detectors also detect for radon. Um, we wanna help manage for allergies and or asthma by cleaning and vacuuming regularly to reduce those allergy triggers in the home. And we want to avoid accidental poisonings by keeping medications locked up and cleaning agents and other poisons out of reach of children. <coughs> and the last tip was to keep our family finances in check. Track your expenses and update your budget regularly. Eat at home often because meals outside of the home usually cost more. Plan your menus and use coupons to help um, keep your food costs down and use leftovers as the basis for another meal. So I think Denise, oh, so um, with that, we just thought those were kind of some fun tips to go along with our healthy eating, um, healthy exercise, and a fun way to think about them during the month of, month, month of March, while we um, celebrate the Living Well Month. And we hope everybody chooses to um, do a few of these each week or maybe each month for the next year. So with that, I think we are going to sign off. If Samantha has anything to add, I think we're, well, I know we're back again next Tuesday at 1.30. Wednesday. Wednesday. I don't even know what day of the week it is today. <coughs> um, next Wednesday at 1.30 for another fun activity and healthy snack. Exactly right. Thank you both. Um, thank you for all of those inspirational tips. I'm excited to dive into some of them. And I'm really excited to see if, if this chocolate smoothie, the spinach just... I get all those extra greens, but I get my sweet treat. So I'm excited for that. I wonder if a, a date in it would be a, a good addition too. I like to put dates in my smoothies. So I'll be trying that. I hope you do too. Feel free to add it to social media or just share amongst your team members what's working for you. If you have any requests, feel free to put that on our Facebook page as well. Thank you so much, Kim, for showing us how to get 15 minutes of a mile, even if it isn't gorgeous out where you're living and you can do it straight from the living room using a chair and the ground. So thank you so much for showing us that um, we have a couple of great strategies and choices for embracing health in our lives. Thank you so much. See you at 1.30 uh, Mountain and wait, y'all are Mountain now, Mountain or Central. Yep, Mountain. Yep, because two hours, two. 3.30 Eastern next Wednesday. We're so excited. We'll see you then. Thank you all so much.